Let's take a look at the new features here in the Affinity Photo 1.9 update. First off, it comes with four new selections of overlays. Fog overlays, rain overlays, rainbow, and also snow. These are all free. Make sure that you register your product and you can then download these right here. They're also available for commercial use, so that's a real plus. Now to find the list of updates, go up to the help menu right here, come down to Affinity Photo Help, there it is, and then up the top here it says introduction, click on that, new features in this version. And here we go. There's a lot of stuff in here, as you would expect. Let's just scroll down here. Some new photo editing options in here. You can isolate and edit spare channels as layers. Let's just open a file here and I'll show you how the spare channels work. Just a real simple one. I just took a dog picture here and made a simple mask and then remove the background. You're going to have channels. Let's open up our layers first. There we go. Here's our background layer with the channel. You can see that right there. There's the mask. And then open up our channel. Here we go. So here's the channels. And then there's the mask right there, composite alpha, that's the mask. If you right click and create spare channel, and you can now actually paint right on this. Obviously, white shows, black hides. So if I grab a paintbrush, and mine's currently set at a reasonably sized one here. It's black paint, you can see right there, it's kind of a soft edge brush. I can then come in here and paint right onto this spare channel and clean up my layer mask that easy just using a brush. Another small but very important update here is the elliptical marquee tool can now be set to draw from center. Let me show you how that comes in useful. I'll bring up another file here. There we go. Say I wanted to make a circular marquee around this flower. Difficult to do, but we can do that now. I'll just go over here to the elliptical marquee tool right here. And we now have the option right there to draw from center. I can then come in and find the center of the flower, which is right about here, and pull out. And then very easily make my selection right from the center. Again, very small little improvement, but a big one and a very, very useful improvement. Real nice new feature right there. There are quite a few new features here in the layer management. Curves adjustments can now be precisely controlled at the node level. A real fun one here is the non-destructive live liquify filter layers. This now has a non-destructive layer. Let's see how that one works. We'll go back to our flower picture. Here's our layers, and then over here under the layer menu, come down here to new live filter layer. Go over here and choose distort, and then down here, there's the lookify at the bottom of this list. And here we go, there's our lookify filter. Notice on the right-hand side, we now have a lot of options in here. You can show or hide the mesh. You can see that screen in there. You can adjust your division size, the color of the mesh. You can load a new mesh. You can adjust your brush size. Right now, it's pretty big. Let me bring the brush size down a lot. That's better. You can adjust the hardness, opacity. Let's go over here and grab this twirl tool right here. Now, I'll just spin this one leaf, this one petal right here. You can see how it's quickly just distorting that. Okay, so you can do our real fancy distortions this way. Once you're through making your distortions, go up here, click on Done. It takes you back into your layers. You see our layers right over here. Let's just open this up, and you'll see the liquify is now sitting on its own adjustment layer. If I hide that, there's the original again. So it's very useful here so you don't destroy your original image. It's just a layer that contains that adjustment. More filters here work on more things right there. You can link layers together. And here's a real nice fun one, the pattern layers. Let me show you this one. Let's just bring up a new file for this. Go to file and new. I'll also do a default size here. There we go. And let's just put on just a basic shape into here. I'm going to grab our shape tool over here. And I think I'll find something real easy like a star. There's a star. And let's give this kind of a nice color, maybe kind of a nice blue. Looks good. Let's now draw in our star. There we go. Just a nice star just like that. Okay. Let's now right click on this. The pattern brush works with rasterized images. So this is a vector image. I need to rasterize this into a bitmap image or a raster image. Image. So I'll come down here to rasterize. It's now just a rasterize image. Let's now just select this. And for that, I'll go over here and grab the flood select tool, click inside. It's now selected. Okay, now I can easily convert this into a pattern layer. Let me show you that. Go up here to layer, come down to new pattern layer from selection. And there we go. That's that background layer. Let me just hide that one. There's our pattern layer. And notice that one of these is selected. If I grab my move tool over here, I can then change this one image and everything else is going to follow along. Let's say I wanted to just rotate this. I can just do that and rotate the whole pattern around like that. If I pull this in and out, make the pattern larger or smaller. There we go. I can even change the shape in here. There it is. And then another fun thing down here under brushes is you can make a brush from an image from any pixel selection, just like we made our pixel selection for that linked layer. Let's see how that one works. Get this out of the way. Close that down, and here's our basic star again. I'll make this a bit smaller. So again, I'll grab the flood selection right there and make a selection. There we go. And now, go up here to the brushes panel, 
In here, find a set to work in. I'll set this one here at my dry media, just for the heck of it, because there's an open spot right down here. And then click on the menu button. It's right there, little pop-up menu. And down here, you can make a new brush from selection. There it is. Click on that. There's that new brush from that selection. I'll go ahead and I'll select that one. Let's now deselect that. Go here to our brush tool. You can see there it is. There's the brush. I can go larger or smaller on this. It's just a regular brush. Here's the width. Let's bring our size down. There you go. There's a smaller brush, and it behaves just like a regular brush. As you see right here, you can actually do the exact same thing to make an intensity brush from a mask selection. So you can paint in intensity as well. So what I'm most excited about here on this whole update is this one right there, text on a path. This is something which Affinity Photo has needed for a long time. Out of all the different programs that I've worked with, this one is the easiest to use. Let's see how this works. Now to do this, you have to have some kind of a vector shape, a vector line or a vector shape. So let's just choose a standard ellipse over here. Let's give this a transparent fill and a stroke. I'll set the stroke here at maybe one point so it's easy to see. There we go. And we'll now draw a basic ellipse in here. And I'll hold the control key down to draw from the center. And let's just do a shift key so that it's perfectly circular. So there we go, just a basic shape as you can see. Just a nice line. Again, this is a vector shape. Now to use the text on a path, come down to your text tool right here and choose the artistic text tool. This is your standard, just putting text on your page. If we come right up next to this from the inside, see that little kind of squiggly line there? This will put text along the inside of that path. If I come just outside, same squiggly line right there, but my cursor is outside. This puts text on the outside of the path. I'll just click right there. There's our text insertion point. Let's go ahead and just type something in here. Notice how it takes it halfway around and then it flips it over on the inside. Now I just began typing right where that was sitting, which is okay, but you can control this now in all kinds of different ways. Let's say first I wanna get this thing rotated around. I'll just move back over here to the standard move tool, come just outside and I can then rotate this around, get that text right on top. There we go, let's go back to our text tool and notice these little green handles, there's a green handle here and a red handle here and I have two sets of those. That's because the top part is now controlled by one set and the bottom is controlled by a different set. I can actually take this right here and I can move this one around like that. I actually have two lines of text so I can get these centered exactly where I want those. That's pretty good like that. Let's go to this next one here. I can then move this around. Now, of course, this is outside. This bottom line is inside. The main thing here is that this gives me the text outside, correctly aligned, and correctly aligned at the bottom. This is one of those things that most programs just have a real hard time with, is getting the correct text on the bottom part. You can wrap clear around if you want to. That's also an option, but I'll show you this one first. I'm just going to select this bottom text just like that. And we're now going to adjust the baseline, which is right up here. Here's a baseline controller. I'll pull the baseline over and I can then pull that text so the baseline is outside. And there we go. We have text clear around on the outside. It's that easy to set up. I'm just do the control Z key here and undo that baseline shift. And let's now grab this. I'll pull it clear around like that. And now the text goes clear around the circle. So you can see how easy it is to control this text. Let's say I wanted to make the circle larger and leave the text the same size. Just grab one of your corners, pull it out. You can then adjust the size of your circle in here or your shape. You can even adjust the shape size like that. It just changes just by pulling that out to the side. If you hold the shift key down, it goes out symmetrically. Let's say I wanted to make the whole thing bigger, including the text. Go up to the top up here. Notice that I have two dots. Click the outside dot and pull up on that one. I can then make it larger or smaller just like that. And again, this is the easiest way I've ever seen to do text on the path and especially text around a circle. So let's say I wanted to get this back to two sets of lines, two lines in here. I'm just gonna go backwards around this like that. And I now have my two lines again. Let's select this bottom section in here, just like that. Go back up, adjust our baseline on that to get it outside the circle. And there we go. Text going clear around the outside of a circle that easy and that fast. As I said, this is the one new feature that I'm most excited about. Okay, there we go. That's a look at the Affinity Photo 1.9 update, the new features in here in this new update. If you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. Check out my channel for several more Affinity Photo videos. I have all of that in a playlist. And also check out my complete course for using Affinity Photo. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.